see you and welcome you. Want to extend a warm welcome to our guests that are here with us today. Uh, some are here because of our uh, musical program today that's being presented by our Mona Union Academy, and we're just thrilled to welcome them here. And we know I heard them uh, rehearsing a little bit earlier, and church, you are going to be blessed uh, today by the ministry of our young people. So welcome. Also want to extend a welcome to those that are joining us via online and digital land. God bless you wherever you are. Thank you for tuning in and joining us this Sabbath day as we seek to worship God together and seek him in this important time of year. We do have just a couple of announcements that we want to uh, make this morning, and Pastor Victor has something that he would like to share with you uh, regarding youth and young adult ministries. Pastor Victor, how are you doing today? Happy Sabbath. It's good to see all of you. I am really excited for what we're going to experience this morning. Amen. Well, uh, my favorite season, Christmas season, that means a lot of fun uh, programs and activities planned for all things youth and young adults. So I just want to let you know about a couple of them that are happening soon. This coming Tuesday, uh, we're going to be able to do something that has become a bit of a tradition for us. Oh, we sounds couldn't do great. It last year because of COVID. But early in December, we come together, all youth, at the youth house to decorate it for Christmas and get it ready for the season. So Sounds this, like fun. Yeah, this yeah. Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Uh, at our usual youth night time, we're going to come together at the youth house, bake some cookies, play some Christmas music, and decorate the house together. And then after that, on Saturday, December 18, Saturday night, is when we will have our annual Christmas party, youth Christmas party at the youth house. We're going to play our usual white elephant so if you want to participate make sure you bring a gift no more than fifteen dollars please bring a gift wrap it up nicely it will play uh white elephant and wear your ugliest christmas sweater to win a big prize <laughs> all right yeah it sounds like a great time it is, victor it is, the, it is the best and then um uh, next saturday the 11th we're gonna have our young adults christmas party at the beta house so that's at 6 30 p.m uh, on December the 11th. We're going to do the same. We're going to play White Elephant, so bring a gift. Wear your ugliest Christmas sweater to win big. I'm really excited for this. Really hope to see you there, everybody. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Pastor Victor, and uh, I know that all those that participate are going to have a great time. Also, just a reminder, coming up on uh, the 18th, we'll have, uh, sponsored by Love Does and our Hebrews Cafe, another holiday house. Uh, we did a similar thing uh, for the Thanksgiving season, and we're going to do kind of a, a similar Christmas gathering on Sabbath the 18th. We will uh, delay starting our worship service until 11 a.m., and that'll give some extra time for us to fellowship. So the, the event will be happening in the fellowship hall from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., and then also following the worship service as well. So just want to remind you of that. Then also, church family, next Sabbath, a week from today, we're doing something special, uh, an Advent communion. And uh, so the pastoral staff, uh, Pastor Victor, Pastor Stephanie, and myself, will be leading out in this communion service. And this is just a great time for us to, just as we think about wrapping up the year, remembering uh, the, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, uh, you know, we're going to have uh, a baptism. We had a baptism last night. We have another baptism this morning. And, um, you know, the Lord gave us these two ordinances, the ordinance of baptism and the ordinance of the Lord's Supper, to remember. And so I just ask that as you think about this week and all the hubbub that goes on during this season, let's be thinking and anticipate the blessing that God will bring us through an Advent communion time uh, next Sabbath. Well, church family, as we um, need to do, there's a, a, a wonderful uh, news that, that with these baptisms and also a membership transfer, we need to welcome in some people to our church family. So we always enjoy that a lot more than seeing them go, right? But uh, Millie and Sherman Jefferson, would you stand where you guys are? Very good, and turn around and see everybody, huh? All right, thank you. 
And uh, this dear couple, uh, Sherman is a retired pastor. They're transferring their membership from Southern California at the Azure Hills Church. And they've joined us here in Visalia. And some of you have met uh, Sherman, as we included him in uh, talking about, he pastored, uh, was a pastor for Roger Morneau. Uh, and so we talked about that a few weeks ago. And so uh, Millie and Sherman, church family, love on them, welcome them this afternoon as we conclude the service today. And as you get to know them, you're going to find out that these are really special, beautiful people. So uh, welcome to our family. And um, I'm going to vote all together, in addition to Millie and Sherman, we have uh, a baptism last night of Judy Barnett. Judy, would you stand and just uh, turn around? Okay, very good, there's Judy. And, um, and uh, we're gonna show a little video clip following our baptism that takes place here in a few minutes. But uh, it was a beautiful time last night, and we want to welcome Judy into our family. And then Lori, Lori Henry, would you please stand and turn around so the church can see you as well? Very good. And uh, uh, Lori was a listener of The Promise FM and uh, through time became acquainted also with Lorraine and Jerry Pfeiffer. And uh, so it's been a journey. She's been attending our church since before the pandemic on a regular basis, and today she's taking the step of baptism. So subject to her baptism, and in accordance with Judy's baptism last evening, and the transfer request of Millie and Sherman, what say you about inviting them to join our church? Can I get a motion? Is there a second? All in favor, uplifted hand. All right, this is your new church family. We love you all. Welcome. Well, let's... One more announcement. Okay. I was just, I was just asked to share with you and remind you that next Sunday at 11 a.m., is that correct? Oh, that's right. We will, that's right. Uh, the ladies are having their Christmas brunch. That is so mark right. So your calendars and be sure to come out, ladies next Sunday at 11 a.m. in our fellowship hall here at the church. Yeah, stay up, Victor. We're going to just start singing. And I need to be on this side. And church family, would you stand with us as we sing uh, tis, uh, the season for Christmas songs, right? So let's sing. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. i 
family. Church family, it's good to be here, is it not? You know, things that happen at this season remind us, yes, Jesus is the reason. And there should be peace in our hearts. There's some folks that um, don't have that. And if you're honest with yourself, don't give me the baptized answer that you have peace all the time. Don't believe it. But that's why we need to turn to Jesus, is it not? Um, let's just stand where we are and we'll have prayer as we worship the King. So would you bow with me as we talk to our Father? Jesus, thank you that we can be here. Thank you that over 2,000 years ago, you came as a babe. You made that choice. Your entrance wasn't grand. Your entrance was in a barn, in a box of hay, in a feed trough, in a cold environment, unannounced, except by angels. And isn't that the most wonderful thing, to hear the voices of angels? Because someday you're coming back with angels. You're coming to say, yes, peace be still forever. Jesus, we think about people in our family here who've suffered loss. We've had a number of families who lost loved ones recently. Their hearts are heavy. And may we come around them and give them comfort. Lord, we're not to live to ourselves. Remind us as we look outside ourselves that you long for us to come alongside of people. Father, I want to thank you for this worship time because in this today, you're directing our thoughts towards heaven. Thank you for our Mona. And I pray that a special blessing as they minister to us with song and word. Jesus, this is just not another time. It's just not another Saturday. It's just not another December. It's because you've called us for the here and now so that we can be with you. Not only now, but forever. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
a special day it is today that, um, you know, Rose and I have really enjoyed getting to know you and establishing a friendship with you. And uh, I just want to praise the Lord for the ministry of the Promise FM and how they reached uh, out through the airwaves and you became familiar with our church through, through the Promise FM. And then, of course, you forged a friendship with Jerry and Loray and how special they are, aren't they? Just beautiful people. Jerry and Loray, would you guys stand wherever you are? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. And so, Lori, this is a special day. Yes, it is. When you are following the example of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when he was baptized. Yes. And so, as you have chosen to accept Jesus into your life, and because he is now your Lord and your Savior, it is my honor and my privilege to now baptize you in the name of the Father, his Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. church family this by the way is your your church family and they're gonna they're gonna love on you and encourage you and walk with you in the days ahead Thanks. that sound good yeah would you pray with me church family as we <coughs> bow father we thank you for your love for us lord we celebrate this special moment with Lori. And Lord, I just pray a blessing on all who have witnessed this, those who have been baptized. Lord, I pray that each one of us would reconsecrate ourselves and our decision to be a Christ follower. And Lord, I pray if there's anyone that may be here, that may be sensing that for whatever reason uh, they need to be baptized or rebaptized, Lord, may your Holy Spirit just guide and impress them. Our desire is to walk in obedience to you. So, Lord, as we go from this place today, may you go with Lori. May we support her and love her. And, Lord, may you add your blessing and your presence through your angels and your Holy Spirit to the remainder of our service today is our prayer. We, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
and have a dad with you all. And this is the year of coming, so it's a Merry Christmas as well for those of you who are celebrating a little early. Um, I was an English teacher actually, and uh, when my students write for me and I say read it, they always give me disclaimers. And I always say, don't give me a disclaimer, just read it. You wrote it, so own it. And um, today I'm gonna actually break that rule and give you a disclaimer. Um, I find that today's story is going to be one that, that might be slightly confusing, so I wanna clear up any confusion. We know this character, but biblically in the Bible, the Bible does not give us his backstory. Our story begins with him meeting Jesus for the second time. And we go back in time to explain maybe what his journey was and when he met Jesus the first time. So we start with him maybe in his 50s. That's a little bit of my literary imagination. And we go back to him as a young businessman trying to make money. And then we end with him when he meets Jesus for the second time. So if you can pay attention to his journey, I pray that you will grasp the importance of the divine, of the divine appointments that we have with God. Sometimes we are so busy that we miss it. Sometimes we are so taken with our lives and ourselves and we're such selfish people that we would miss a baby that could save our lives, that we could miss a savior that dies on the cross for us and keep it moving like nothing ever happened. I pray that that will not be us. And enjoy our little presentation. Thank you.
Yes, all 55 years of me is up in this tree. I know, it, it's ridiculous. And uh, the truth is, I can't even exactly tell you why, except, uh, except to say that a name, a name almost haunts me. A lifetime ago, when I was first starting out in this business, uh, I came across that name. I was, I was indifferent at best, and like most young and ambitious men, I was too concerned about my upcoming prospects and stuffing my pockets that I didn't even really take note of the name, and I hardly even cared what it meant for me. But I keep hearing things now, puzzling things, and, and it all started with, with one crazed Jew declaring that name to be the Lamb of God. And I took that with a grain of salt because, well, who really cares about that sort of thing, you know? But, but then a colleague of mine told of standing in a crowd of maybe 5,000 people or so, listening to the man that goes by that same name. And on that day, this man, he, he multiplied two fish and, and five loaves to feed every single one of the 5,000. Who was he? Surely he cannot be that baby that I met so many years ago. So naturally, I was curious. I, I began to follow the rabble whenever I caught wind of that name. And it led me to a crowd. And we were, in this crowd, we were all watching the, the same man. And I saw a woman, and, and she was on the brink of death. And, and all she did, all she did, she just touched the hem of his robe. And all the life that she had lost, she instantly regained. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sitting in this tree with aching bones and less than perfect sight, just hoping to regain a moment that I lost so many years ago. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to regain a life that I lost. I'm determined not to miss my last defining moment. I've just been hired to do a job is all. Whether you like me or not, it does not change what I must do. You owe the Roman state 25 denarii, and it's just my job to collect it. That's all. <laughs> That's all? You should be ashamed of yourself, you Jewish rat. <laughs> it's fine to call me names, ma'am, really. But if I receive no payment today, uh, Roman soldiers will be here next week. Uh, now, you may not have the denarii, but, but surely that silver ring you have on will satisfy your debt. Satisfy my debt? What will you ask for next, hmm? What will I take off next to satisfy the exorbitant taxes I pay from the nothing I earn? Here, do you want my head scarf? My sandals? Here, what about my sarong? Do you want my undergarments? Whoa. Because I have nothing left. There is nothing. Now don't come back here! <laughs> well, actually, since the denarii keeps losing value, I would take all of that, and I would trade it all for money. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. And, and don't forget tomorrow's census in the square. A census? When will this end? When will your promised one come to end this constant pain and suffering? When will I be more than just a nobody in this Roman province? Shalom, Reb Jonathan. Uh, how's your family fearing today? Well, let's see. We are one denarii away from living on the streets. So I would say better than most, wouldn't you? Oh, oh, and of course, you would know. Did you need something? No, sir, just 
a friendly greet. Friendly? Sir, we are not friends. Uh, Mr. K, I was wondering if I could have word about your accounts. It seems as that your last payment of five denarii was... Uh, uh, mother, let me assist you to your home. <laughs> Son, I think you have assisted enough around here. I can make it up this lane just fine. However, you. Maybe it is you who needs some help. Do you need a social intervention, son? I sit here watching you for just a second, and I already feel depressed. Look at you, out in these streets, like a motherless child. When was the last time you had an actual conversation with someone? Mm. When was the last time you visited your mother, son? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> mother. A female who carries a child in her stomachs for nine months or thereabout, then spits it out into this vicious world. M-O-T-H-E-R. I know what a mother is. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Just, what I should have said is that, I don't know, I haven't seen her in a long while now. What is it about you young people? Of all things, you choose to be a Jewish tax collector? Choose to work for our Roman oppressors. Mm, and each evening, you're so busy counting your cash, considering yourself blessed because you have money. But when I ask about your mother, you don't even know a crying shame. Um, it was her choice, not mine. Oh, what happened? Did you, did you try collecting taxes from her? Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Was that too much? My apologies. I, I guess I stand corrected, but either way, I know, like every other mother, she had higher hopes for you. Did she dream of you working seven days a week for a government that oppresses your own people? Mm. And did she know that each evening, your pockets would be stuffed with their money? Mm -mm. And with all this luxury at your fingertips, did she envision you out in these streets without another single human being for company? Because if so, she must be so proud. Actually, I'm, I'm not really sure that I care what she oh. thinks because, well, she's not here. And apparently, I'm not just, I'm not just a disgrace among those who live in this town. And, and even a mother's love evaporates. So, so let us not speak of my mother. I am a man now, and I'm going to do what I must to make a name for myself because as it stands, I have none. A tax collector. That's what this is about? That's how you intend on making this name for yourself? Not so bright, are you, son? Oh my goodness. You see, you have a name. Mother or not, someone claims you. I just hope that when that someone shows up, you're not too busy out here making that name for yourself to discover your real name. I fear you will miss your defining moment. And, and what moment would that be? Mother Anna, I am not depending on another soul to supply me with my defining moment. And, and as for the person claiming me, who would claim the likes of me? I, I just don't answer that. Just don't forget to make your way down to the census tomorrow. Oh, make no mistake about it, son. Tomorrow's census is the one I've been waiting for. Trust me, you are the only one.
there you are, son. D do you mind if I join you? These old bones are aching, and I might as just, well, just wait here till you get to me. But no rush, though. You just get to me when you get to me. Actually, I was going to <laughs> sit. <laughs> Thank you greatly. To sit there. Next, family name? Uh, Levi. Why does that sound familiar? Um, how many in the household? Just one. And address? Uh, the back room of the cat's house. Oh, that's right. I, I remember the name now, but the address on file always took, took me to a small home near the Via Nova. Uh, yes, I, I did live there a year ago, but as circumstance would have it, I have been forced to move. <laughs> Mr. Levi, you owe quite a hefty amount that I've tried on multiple occasions to collect. Oh, I know, I know. I know that I'm a little behind, but I'm lucky to share even a corner of a room with a neighbor of mine. Uh, I simply do not have anything I can spare. I was evicted after using my last to pay taxes two, two years ago. Th there's nothing left. Please have mercy, sir. <laughs> Mr. Levi, we seek mercy from God alone, and it is apparent that not even he has mercy to give. Look, like every other Jew, you have valid reasons and excuses but my only concern is that the debt gets paid. Now, is the address you provided correct? And you said that there were others living with you there. Come, sir, speak up. Seems to me a grown man having to share one room with another grown man simply has no means to pay. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, yes, I would agree. And me? My bad, my apologies. Carry on. Mr. Levi, either way, your debt will be paid one way or another. Now stand aside, please. What? Wait, please, wait, I don't have the money. Please, wait. It couldn't be helped. Oh, it could not be helped, eh? Are you sure that that is true? But you are right about one thing, though. The kind of mercy we seek, the relief we need from this heavy load, it can only come from God. And young man, it is coming. As a matter of fact, it may already be here. Where? Where among this poor rabble is there a shred of hope or relief? <laughs> it's a great thought, though. Next, family name? Con. How many in the household? Uh, only two. Address? Uh, Westwood room in the courtyard of Via Livingston. Occupation? Uh, Weaver. Any additional land or properties? Uh, your tax bill will be forwarded to the address you provided. What? Next, family name? Uh, Wyatt. Uh, how many in the household? Just my two children. Uh, address? Uh, one room, one house, uh, whatever I got in the bank, you know, whoever is. Occupation? I'm the clerk. Any additional land or properties? Additional land or properties? Really? Your tax bill will be forwarded to the... Next, family name? We are nobodies. How many in the household? What household? Address? In the cold, cold streets. Occupation? None that pays. Any additional land or properties? Only in our dreams. Your tax bill will be forwarded to the address you provided. Uh, how much longer? When will this end? What God can gain glory from the degradation of his people? Mercy is dead. See what I mean, Mother Anna? It, it feels like they think that the louder they complain, the faster their salvation will come. Like, like it'll just appear for you. Now that, that is a sorry sight. The power of our lives is in our own hands. And the sooner that they realize that, the better for them. They seek mercy and redemption, but both are dead. Son, the presence of pain does not mean the absence of God. Mercy and redemption are very much alive because Jehovah lives. And I know that in the very core of my being that he is very near. Where is he then? When will he choose to show up?
coming, my king is coming soon. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. Lord, I am tired and heavy is my burden. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. I'm down in the valley staring at the mountain. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. You split the mighty waters of the Red Sea. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. Lord, will you split the rising waters around me? The king is coming, my king is coming soon. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. Well, he showed up for Moses and he showed up for Daniel and he showed up for David when he walked the Lord. Well, he showed up for Moses and he showed up for David and he showed up for Daniel and Zacharias. Showed up, yes, he showed up. The world is weary and heavy with this hunger. My king is coming. My king is coming. We wait on your promise no matter how much longer. My king is coming. My king is coming. A child will be born, born. The prophets will have spoken. My king is coming. Bring the captive and healing all is broken. The king is coming. My king is coming soon. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. The king is coming, my king is coming soon. The king is coming soon. The king is coming soon. Well, he showed up for Moses and he showed up for Daniel and he showed up for Daniel when he fought the lion. Well, he showed up for Moses and he showed up for David and he showed up for Daniel. Showed up, lions. Showed up. Yes, he showed up. The sudden sunlight, it's almost blinding, is it not, Mother Anna? I, I didn't realize what a cloudy day it has been until now. Sir, please step forward. Family name? Of the House of David. How many in the household? Three, including our little one here. Address? Goodness, I, I can hardly see this page with this, this glaring light. Uh, address? We actually reside in Nazareth, but... Our family home is here in the Bethlehem courts. Welcome home, then. It seems you've brought the sun with you. It, it does, doesn't it? How old is he? He's just a few days old. Mm. And was he born around here? Funny story, actually. All I can say is that this census could not have come at a more inopportune time. It seems quite opportune to me. Not even Caesar must understand the great import of this particular census. And you sure are taken with this census, Mother Anna. Not the census, son. This census. No, sir. I had a strange dream that I think might be of particular interest to you. W would you mind if I... Actually, I would like to... Now, I stood in a forest. Already strange, right? It was dense and very dark. And from the dark corners of that forest, I could hear the faint sounds of my people. Their moans and their cries, they surrounded me and, and they pierced through the heavy stillness. But there was a light up ahead, coming from a, a hall of some kind, or was it a house? I, I don't know exactly, but I, I stepped into that space 
to find something wrapped up in what looked like rags. So I stepped a bit closer to see what was wrapped in the rags, and I saw a baby's face peeking out. Then I noticed a magnificent star, made all the more glorious because its light was amplified by celestial beings of some kind, and they were guarding the child. And the words that they repeated, it caused my hair to stand on end. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold your God. Now, the, 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 the pain and suffering of the forest, it, it seeped into that room and it muffled the sound of these angels, but stronger voices from somewhere cried, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and glory and honor and praise. And well now, I, I understood our custom of slaying a lamb to atone for the sins of our people, but th there was no lamb. This was a child, a baby. And, and the groans outside, they just, they grew and, and they grew. So desperate to understand, I drew closer to the place where the babe lay and I was stunned to, to my core. The, the, the rags that surrounded this child, they were soaked with blood. How, why, w was he hurt? Where was he wounded? So frantically, I, I peeled back the rags, searching for the wound, like where was it? But then, an angel stilled my hand and whispered, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold your God, my God.
to the window, and outside hung a magnificent star, much like the one in the dream. And it was shining in all of its brilliance. Stars usually hang in the air. So I'm really not quite sure where this is going. You're missing it, son, just like I told you you would. You've got to make that name for yourself, right? You've got to carve out your future so that your name is known and respected. This present moment is so lost on people like you. Don't you feel anything? Don't you sense a stirring of some kind? Don't you understand that the world is shifting on its axis this very moment? Never mind, uh, I'm almost done, but I promise I'm not leaving until I've done what I've come to do, and it's not for you to fill out some inconsequential form with some stupid information. No, sir, that star hung right above the Abram's Inn that night. Where did you say your child was born? The Abram's Inn. Behold your God. You know, I tried to come to you that night. Hurriedly, I grabbed any clothes I could put my hands on because even with my limp, I could be to that place in a half hour's walk. But something stopped me. That was not the right time. The appointed time would come, and I would know it. And right now, right now is the appointed time. The appointed time, stars, dreams and angels, visions of a baby God covered in blood. Who has time for all this senseless prattle? I've sat here for what seems like hours, just hoping, waiting for you to let me to do my job, hoping that any of this would make enough sense to justify the wait. But it doesn't. I've tried to be courteous before, but if you do not remove yourself with all your weird dreams, I will have you removed. Do you understand? Enough is quite enough. Now, sir, what is your uh, occupation? Uh, sure, sure, I will go. But, but before I do, I have one more question. What did you decide to name the child? Jesus. We were told to call him Jesus. Mm -hmm. It means that he, he will... will be a savior to his people. The dream. So, son, I'm suddenly feeling overwrought. Please, please, lend me something to fan myself with. What are you doing? Sir, are you mad? listen, because there is no time. So, so I didn't tell you the end of my dream, what eventually woke me, but someone seeks the life of that child. Right now, soldiers from the king are on their way. You have to take your wife and your child and get out of here. No, 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 don't grab anything. Just go. Get back here. What, what, uh, what are you doing? You meddling old soldier sees this woman. Lift up your heads. Oh, you ancient gates, be lifted up. You ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? I have done what I have come to do. Do with me as you wish.
And I'm not quite sure what happened to her after that day. Well, other than the fact that I had her arrested. And when Herod's soldiers came to inquire about Joseph and his family, I handed them everything that I could. <laughs> A Jewish rat. That's the name I gave to myself. A name associated with hate and disdain and derision. <laughs> Maybe if I had a dream like her, I could have been the hero of this story. <laughs> Maybe if I had witnessed the host of angels declaring the coming of a Messiah in the middle of nowhere in a field, maybe just that would have jarred me into action. <laughs> Behold your God. <laughs> Behold your God. Only I could have stood in the presence of God himself and remained so doggedly unchanged. <laughs> Only I could have been so wrapped up in myself that as she saves the Messiah, I tax him. I'm winning, aren't I? So what's the point of me sitting up in this tree? <laughs> I'm, I'm not even sure because I miss my moment so entirely it, it feels like the time is unredeemable. I, I tell myself that I just need to see him one last time. I, it just feels like recognizing him would cure my voice of self-hatred. Clearly I'm not worthy enough to call his name, but if my heart could just touch the hem of his garment... Maybe I could regain that part of me that was loved by a mother or loved by anyone. I, I want my dignity back. I need my self-respect. I long for life and love. And Did you call me? Where is that voice? Me? You want to eat with me? At my house? Zacchaeus, perhaps this is your defining moment. Don't blow this one. I'm coming, Jesus.
but our dear choir director, Mrs. Mason, is having um, a special week this week. It's her birth week, and we are very grateful for all she does for us students. We do not deserve her, and yet she puts in all the time and effort to put on this beautiful program. So happy birthday, Miss Mason. Can we all join in saying happy birthday? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Armona Union Academy. Yes. And many of you may not know that director Danica Mason writes the dramas. And so, great job. Thank you for using your gifts to bless not only these young people, but all of us. God bless you. Happy birthday. Um, I did not tell Dr. Richard Dunn that I was going to invite him up, but I would like to invite him up real quick. And Lori, I'd like to invite you up as well. You know, as we pray our benediction prayer this morning, I want to invite uh, Dr. Dunn uh, to pray. In the New Testament, it was customary that when the followers of Jesus were baptized, that the elders would lay hands on that individual and pray for the outpouring and not only being baptized in the water, but to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lori, we want to lay our hands and bless you with that prayer this morning. Dr. Dunn. Man. You know, folks, I just want to also say the ministry of the promise was part of her coming to Jesus. Amen. So when you're giving, when you're thinking, does it make a difference? It does. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Lori's life. And we pray that blessing of your spirit. I can imagine just as you did with your son when he came up out of the Jordan, you said, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. This is Lori who you are well pleased. We thank you for that. May she know that you never leave her and that she has a church family who will not leave her either. Thank you, Father. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Church family, would you on your way out be sure and express our gratitude and thanks to all those participants from Armona Union Academy? Would you also greet warmly and welcome Millie and Sherman Jefferson? Would you also warmly welcome Judith Barnett? and of course, Lori Henry into our church family. During this Advent season, may the God of heaven and earth be near to you. May you seize your divine moment. May God bless you. Go in peace. See you next time.